Oh, I'm I am so lucky. I saw that yesterday because I would be yeah. crying. You right were crying. Now. It was you were crying funny. yesterday. Yeah. So now let me ask you, how much time did it take you to do this Sasquatch thing? Uh, really, like five seconds. Just comes I'm natural. really good at it. And then the chicken. For reasons. He was the quickest dancer out of all of you. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, not a lot of motive. You just like you're motivated. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, like, it's almost like I've done it before. Hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Inventory, should we? All let's right. do it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, hey, check it out. We're going to swap Good. spots here because I'm going to drive, which means pay attention to my spelling. <clears throat> yep. So, first thing, um, <laughs> let's just talk about. Uh, that's not it. That's no, it. that's it. We're going to talk about uh, one schedule to rule them all. And basically, to do that, we need deploy. And, you know, we're talking inventory. So, the first thing I do is jump into deploy. Yeah. Because it's important. So let's say I'm going to make a schedule, a weekly schedule or a monthly schedule. I'm just going to go to schedules and you'll understand why this is an inventory thing. Yeah. We're going to do a schedule. We're going to call this weekly. Yeah, right out the gate. Weekly. All right. We're just living with it. All right. Love so it. weekly. So <laughs> Oops. Now I can't even click in the right Linux place. administrator that can't type. That's awesome. I represent that statement. So we'll kick this off on Friday, midday. Why? Because yeah. I hate everybody. Yep. Because they make fun of me. But targets. I'm just going to link to PDQ inventory. We're going to grab all the computers because you know what? There may be a computer out there that needs all the packages I'm going to grab. Yep. So we're going to add packages. Uh, 7-Zip, Chrome, maybe Firefox. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get this updated. Now, the interesting thing about this is I really don't want this to deploy every single time a new one of these comes out on Friday to every single one of them, right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is save this, and then I'm going to go add collection conditions. Yep. So basically, I'm going to open 7-Zip. I'm going to go to Properties and say, you know what? I only want this package, which is part of that schedule, to deploy to people who have, who are a member of, Utilities. So there we go. Seven zip. Old. And for those of you watching, you can also use the filter to do that. The filter. Filter. Yes. Anyway, so this the thing about this though is I'm gonna rename this because this if I try to send it to anybody who's not the old, um, they won't get it. Nope. So I'll save this and then let's say I did happen to want to. Uh, send one out to someone who needs it who doesn't have it we just go and grab seven zip again and now i've got one that's not old that i can deploy to machines that would need it that are not part of the old yeah. and then i do the same thing with chrome again go in and, and this time at our property level we go to conditions and then is a member of chrome old yeah. again for each of the packages that you've got in that uh schedule that you just built yeah any thoughts on that, Brig? Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, so what you're doing is you're just saying, like, I'm going to be really general uh, with the schedule, right? And huh. then from there, you're like, okay, with each of these packages, though, I'm going to be very specific on what it is that they're going to, what they're going to attach to. Again, there's two so ways to, to skin that one, right? Yeah. One, I have one schedule, many packages, so, yeah, you know, or I can do many schedules, single packages, and yep. go at it that way. But either way, I accomplish basically the same thing. Just understand, if you are going to send Chrome out or 7-Zip, you're going to need to make sure you get a copy yeah. of the uh, version or undo what you've done right here yeah. to make sure those go out. Because before inventory, I don't know how you did it, but before inventory uh, collections was or inventory conditions mm -hmm. was part of the process, I was definitely one of those that had like 50 schedules. Okay. You know, schedule for each individual thing because I didn't, I mean, obviously you didn't want to put everything in. But once we had that, then it was like, oh, okay, now I can actually run this. And it was perfect. Well, and the thing about it, I learned that from Hanks the other week when we were talking about it. He's like, I just set up one and got everything. Yeah. So, I mean, again, depends on how lazy you are. I'm lazy this way, lazy that way. Yeah, because he used to be the same way I was until this yeah. came out. So. so it's a really powerful tool, too, especially since you can uh, you can combine all kinds of things. Like the file and registry conditions in Deploy, are they're excellent. <laughs> but you, with inventory, you don't need those anymore because you can actually set up like you know, multiple layers of, uh, of collections that look at all kinds of different aspects of the particular machine mm -hmm. or a set of machines and be able to pull from that so and it's, it's powerful take away from this one is build a collection do your filtering yep. and use those collections in your packages yeah exactly all right all right you want what let's do do see do all right. right all right excellent we did that very well <laughs> we practiced yesterday yes we did well. yes we did almost, right. <laughs> almost too well 
Okay, so what else we got? Uh, LAPS. Um, so we've okay, actually... Yeah, i got to okay, ask. I mean, LAPS, what does it stand for? Uh, local Administrative... PowerShell. Password, PowerShell. PS, PowerShell. Password yes. Solution. Is uh, it Local Colby? Administrator Password Solution? Is that correct, Colby? Yes. All right. One word answer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, we've actually done uh, a webcast on this, uh, mm -hmm. about LAPS. So, and that's in the bonus content. But I just kind of want to go over, like, uh, sort of one of the very, obviously very cool things. We've also done multiple domains as well, so we're going to kind of cover both at the same time. As you can see here, what we have, we have all of these little AA Labs computers. Now, this is a discrete domain, completely different. The only connection that this particular domain has with uh, the actual organization, or at least with us here, mm -hmm. is a networking network route. That's it. That's the only thing. So that's uh, what we've done here is we've set up uh, Labs. Mm -hmm. You can see down here. Let me just show you this. Set up Labs. So I'm going to show you very simply preferences. Okay, so why would you set up mul all of these? I mean, for people who have never done this. Oh, multiple domains. Okay. So yeah, most people. I mean, so you can have like a you can have a forest with multiple domains, and you can also have like discrete domains. Like say, like you've got just lab machines that are in a, their own domain. Well, this allows you to go ahead and add those machines into into your uh, inventory and deploy. So you've got one spot for all of them. Exactly. That. Okay. Yep. So, and you're even though you're technically inventorying these computers, LAPS is a much better way of doing it because it's much more secure. And okay. so, as we're moving towards more security, that way you don't need to actually have to use like a local administrator uh, password or like use the administrator account. Even though LAPS will use that uh, by default, you always want to create your own. And yeah. you could those that's all covered in the end of the videos. As you can see here, we've got these LAPS, uh, the users in this uh, Active Directory here. And in the credentials, we've just set up a LAPS. So it's very easy. I can add LAPS. And then this is the LAPS user. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, my typing. Now, yeah, here we go. Let's see if you can type better than week early. Oh, I did it. You did. Yep, there you go. Yep. And then and he's actually using more fingers than I do, <laughs> which ain't tough. Ooh, that's true. <laughs> Now, now I'm lost. Okay, just now, now you're right. lost. And then derailed his train. All right, and so that's just uh, that's just the this is a, a user that I'm putting in now that can actually read lapse passwords. So it has to be a member of when you're setting up laps, set up users that can read lapse passwords, and that's what that is. Password password one, yep. one spelled, one two three four. There you go. All right, and then we're just going to test this against a machine. So yep, D8 Lab O2. So this is something that's in that uh, A Labs domain. Testing. Did I do something bad? Did you? Did I, I derailed you with that password? One, two, three. That's one better. Huh? Yep. So <clears throat> that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. As we that's sit right. here and watch it, just watch Fail. it. Oh, fine. I'll just cancel. Because <laughs> guess what? It's just like on the cooking show. I've already got one done. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> look at Get that. Get turn around. Pull it out of the oven. Check it's, it out. Look at that. It's all hot and bubbly. Fresh for you. So anyway, this one does actually work. So. <laughs> No. All right. Actually, because I tell because we actually scan. Some I know. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I can type. So fifty percent of the time, I'm right. Sixty percent of the time, you can type right every, every time. time. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and basically, what I've just done is I just scanned these. So, what we ooh, do? Ooh, okay, oh. scan users. You've got different yes, scan users. Exactly. Can, okay. Yeah. So. Laps, very cool. Like, oh, it's just the way to do things, and then that ties into scan user credentials. So, as you can see here on this, and again, I'm going to use the highlighter because I love. You love anyway, that. you've got Labs, AA Labs, <coughs> same domain, two different scan users. Very different than our, the domain that we use here, which is web. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little deployment. And I've got one that, uh, well, we could do the schedule. So okay. actually, I'm going to show them with your schedule what you can do. You going to fix my schedule? You should. No, I'm going to fix it at all. I'm just going to show them right here. Use PDQ inventory scan user credentials. Actually, that is available. fixing my schedule. This is like the... Mm, Okay, so yeah. basically what you just did is say, you know, it doesn't have to be these credentials right yeah. here. Use what's basically stored in inventory to exactly. access those machines. Yep. Yeah. So deploy does not need to know of these other <clears throat> domains at all. It doesn't need to know anything about them because other than a network route, the only thing that it really needs to know is that inventory has got it covered. And that's what the scan user credentials will do. So that's basically it. And then you just you can now that will actually deploy to all the computers. So you before, if, if we had to do it before, we'd have to have multiple schedules mm -hmm. for multiple domains. But because we're using the credentials and in inventory, one schedule yep. to rule them all. So yeah, and because so in inventory, when we had set that up originally, and when Alex was running this uh, the schedule, and he chose all computers from inventory, 
if we had actually run that, everything that was in the aalabs.org domain would have actually failed. It would have just improper or wrong username or password. Mm -hmm. But by setting this here to the use it, uh, scan user credentials, that removes that. So it'll, uh, it'll automatically say like, oh, I'm supposed to use these credentials, this PDQ admin or the labs admin password for all of those, and it would have succeeded. Absolutely. So it's good stuff. All right. Should we do a question? I like, I like Let's do a question. Dear Lex and Brig, both PDQ inventory and deploy are heavily dependent upon DNS. In our environment, records are scavenged every seven days. Are there any tricks to getting these clients to update their DNS so that inventory can scan them? We have traveling users that frequently use the VPN and are getting a different address each time they log on. Thanks, Zachary M. Yes, there is a way. Um, uh, we don't have... Um, not, okay, I was going to bring up the DC, but Go for uh, it. I was just going to bring this up. This okay. is probably a good one here. Right? Yeah, there's one. Of the, yeah, that for that your, your laptops. Yeah. Test multiple username and addresses in yep. resolution. In resolution. So if they've got multiple addresses in uh, DNS, then that's the first thing that you want to do. Doesn't and, answer the scavenging question no. though, but that does take care of laptops. Yeah, and that's a setting that you can set both in inventory and deploy. Yeah. So you want to do that. Uh, the other thing is if they're getting DHCP leases, and I'm assuming that this is the VPN is, it depends on where it's getting the DHCP from. If you're using uh, external D, if you're using the VPN's DHCP server, you want to use something like an IP helper to go ahead and route your internal DHCP services through that. And the reason why you want to use that is because there's a setting in the actual server. I'm sorry. I'm just laughing because you got this all in memory, man. Yeah. I have to look this up every time, man. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Uh, there's, a, yeah, there's a setting, uh, if you right click on the actual DHCP server itself and go down to properties and then click on the DNS tab, uh, you'll see that there's a setting to uh, always update the client. That's the setting that you want. And we've done a video on that and there's also a, there's also a KB that's, mm -hmm. that's out there on uh, keeping DNS healthy that shows you that setting for DHCP that you want to use. And then that way what happens is when your computer deregisters and then re-registers again, it will automatically update DNS because uh, the DHCP server now owns that record. So what you want to do, consolidate your DHCP so that your VPN internal networks are the same by using the IP helper. The second thing is to make sure that that setting is done so that uh, DHCP server owns those records. And we, the, the, we have two DNS videos that goes into like, a lot of detail on those. Thank you, oh, DNS master. All right, All right so it's my favorite subject. It is, and you're good at it. Okay, I'm going to switch spots okay. again. All right, I'm going to make people watch me type. All right, Maybe yeah. Not. Okay, so another thing. Um, Inventory, right? So let's say I was helping out a, let's say, uh, you know, I was helping out a client and they had someone leave on not so good terms and they want to know, hey, how many machines has this person touched? Yeah. Okay. So in inventory, you can do what's a, called a WMI query. So if you go to scan profiles and we're going to make a new query and we're just going to call this uh, WMI, I'm going to go after desktops because profiles build desktops, right? Yep. So we're going to add. WMI scanner, I'm going to call it WMI. Let's see if I can type desktops twice correctly. Did I do it? Yeah, you did. Score. Yes. All right. Randomly put. We learn by doing. We do. Now, I'm going to go launch the WMI Explorer and connect. Okay. And I know, I, I thank goodness I did this earlier because yeah. we'd be here all day looking for this if it was otherwise. So if I go to CMV2, double click on that, and then here we go. I know, because we already did this earlier, it's under desktop. And now normally Colby would be telling me to There's use the, the filter. filter, but I like to scroll the mouse wheel. I'm going to grab desktop. Now, I'm going to execute that just to make sure I'm going to get some data back. Yep. It is. So what I will do is copy this. Okay, and that's down there at that query. All right. Control C, yes, under right. the query. Thank you. And I'm going to close that. CMV2 is where I'm at. I'm going to drop that in there. Give that an OK. And now I have a scanner. And then... I'm going to close this out. Now, uh, this one has to be scanned manually because I didn't add a schedule to it. So I'm just going to right click on this, scan collection, WMI. <coughs> oh, you, you hit, hit cancel. cancel. Dang. I was going to call that out earlier, but <sighs> All right, I that's, thought maybe you were doing that on purpose. I know. For some reason. I kind of suck. <laughs> that's okay. Anywho, we're going to run that real quick one more time. But I love live television. Love, well, you, li <laughs> you love yeah. it live? Yeah. All right. So. Once again, WMI. Now I won't be able to spell desktop. No, you did it. You, it's all right. Close spelled enough. It's spelled right. It's spelled right. Leave the capitals out of it. 
desktop. So you know this is live because I stink at this. You should have. That already should be in your copy paste. Right yeah. there it is. Okay. All right. Give it an okay. okay. Saved. All right. Woo. Don't hit cancel. That's what you should learn from that, right? And then I'm going to kick that off because there's no. There it is. W on desktop. Now it's going to scan. Again, the nice thing is anything that you bring up on these. Uh, on these machines. Anything that you see, you're going to be able to write a report on. Yeah. Right? So, uh, WMI, Alphabet's amazing, isn't it? It is. Get down here. And this is scanning. I wonder if we, got any, if we have any data back yet. Oh, we do. Great. So, I'm going to go look for, let's say, the, uh, hey, check it out. Brig. Yeah. I'm going to find, I'm going to write a report for any machine that Brig has touched. So, am I the one that uh, left the company under not so great terms? I would hope not, because you're the DNS master here. So, <laughs> um, again, computer name. We're just going to go and we're going to select from WMI desktop name. That works, and then the filter is going to be again WMI desktop, and the name contains the word Brig. <clears throat> and I guess I should just call this the Brig report. Brig report. Run it and. Those are all the machines that Brig has a desktop on. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. I like doing WMI. Is there a better way or another way to do it? Not necessarily better. Just another. But definitely a different way of doing it. And yes, and that would be using a uh, files and directory scanner. But do we want to do a question first before I go into that, or is this a good segue? No right. question. Okay. Well, dear Lex and Brig, is there a way to avoid a group when deploying to a collection library like shown at the beginning? I would like to avoid server OS and only install software and updates on workstations automatically. If a server does not have 7-zip, it would still show in the collection library. Thanks, Patrick P. Ah, uh, okay. So, a couple of things. Through, uh, yes. Okay, let's start at the back of the question first. <coughs> um, if you if you don't want to deploy to servers and the the server doesn't have seven zip installed, it's not going to be in the old collection. There you go. Yep. So it'll only it'll only anything that already has seven zip installed will be in the old collection. Uh, there's the because there's the new, not installed, and old. Uh, the other thing that you can do starting at the beginning of your question is yes, you can totally avoid a group. Um, if you yeah. pop this up, JJ. Exactly. Yeah. So again, I went to the properties, I went to conditions, and you know what? I'm just going to say don't install it on any servers ever. Ever. Yep. Okay, give it a save, and now it will only hit workstation. So you can take care of that, not only at the package level, yep. you can do it at the step level also yes. on all these. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, so you could do like, so if you wanted to, you could even do like 7-zip not installed, and then just select that OS versions, just workstations, and mm -hmm. then you would still, you'd still avoid that. So like most things in inventory and deploy, there's multiple ways of like getting around that. But you could, and you could also create a collection that just excluded servers too. Uh, you can just right click a collection, uh, duplicate that, and then just select something, uh, let's just say like a OS does not include server. Mm -hmm. And that would be, yeah, there's lots of ways of doing that. Yeah, Colby, yeah. Is, do we cover most of them? Uh, you can also point one collection at another. Uh, there's, yeah. there's like two ways to do that. You can do it from the computer table, and I think there's also like a member of collection table. Yep. Very which true. I use, which is super handy for building <coughs> complex, yeah. Yeah. It is very, very true. All right. Do you, do you want to show them how to do that? Yeah, let's file do files directory. Directory scan. Okay. Okay. So we're still going to look for me, though, right? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know. And resume. They, they didn't give you a uh, pink slip yet? No. Nope. nope. Might be yeah. on your desk. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. All right. Okay. Let's go to pink inventory. Slip on my desk. You'll be looking for Lex. Yeah, Lex. <laughs> well, I was, going to, I was trying to tie that into like a Lex joke. Like, I could find a Lex, but uh, I don't know how many machines you've got on here. I honestly don't know. <laughs> So we're going to go to Options, Scan mm -hmm. Profiles. And I've already got, do I already have one in here? Yeah, I've got one here, but I'm going to just create a new one because it's funner to create. A new one. It's funner? Funner. I like that word. I funner. do too. Use it, Brig. Every day. Desktop. All right. So File and Directory, you're going to go after Directory? Or directory. File? Directory. Okay. I mean, you could do Files too, but yeah, we're going to do that. And then sometimes you can do things like that, uh, but we don't want to do that because we already know that everything's in C users. So. so again, the important thing about this is you want to go as far down the path as you can to keep these scanners yep. fast. Yep. Ouch. Ouch. That's my typing finger. That's it. I'm only half as effective today. Oh, look. I can't. Look. I pulled a Lex. You. There we yeah, go. You did. <laughs> right. Okay, so why did you use a single uh, splat instead of two splats on that one? As Colby informed me, because I'm I like using the two splats because that uses that searches the current directory and then all subsequent directories. 
uh, all subdirectories. This just looks at that particular directory and then stops. It doesn't look at all subdirectories. I, yeah, because I, I, I believe in thorough searching. That takes a long time. Thorough searching. Thorough yeah. searching. I just like lazy filters. Yeah. That's pretty much what my excuse is for any <laughs> rate. Right. Actually, I don't want to. <laughs> don't need to splat that. Or, uh, or I don't need an end backslash. Okay. Not. Yes. All right. All, All right. right, desktop. Yep, and then I'm good with that. All right. Not going to cancel it? Nope, not no, going to cancel oh, it. come on, man. You can pull yeah. X and we have to do it twice, huh? And so... Again, this one's not scheduled, so you got to manually run that one? Yeah, I'm just going to scan some stuff. Did you scan all of them? I did. No, I right, went pretty quick, so... Scan election... Brick it. B. Brick's desktop. B. I know. Yeah, I know. Okay. Alphabet. Alphabet. Yeah. Yay, Alphabet. <laughs> All right, so that's going to scan. It's going to look for that directory specifically. Now, the nice thing is you can do that same thing with the registry. You can look for registry um, entries that yep. don't have values. Yep. So, yeah, kind of then, yeah, you can do like into user dot dat too. If, like, if you wanted to go How'd you pop this up? I love this. Oh yeah, so down here, like right there, right there, the beautiful thing. Yeah, because then you get all of this, and you're like, oh yeah, can computer name could not be found, all kinds of things. And there's going to be a couple of these, a couple of errors coming up. So oh, yeah. I see all my errors in one spot. I see all the scan. Mm -hmm. Everything's going on. Okay. Yep. So, okay, while that's running, should we take another question? Yeah, oh, we got another question. Absolutely. Dear Luxembourg, can you have inventory do a report to show all OEM OS installs and give counts for each OEM serial number? Sincerely, Dustin M. Check this out. I'm going to do, yeah, that's right. what I was going to do. The, right. I'm contemplating. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, to determine that, you'd have to be able to determine the difference between an OEM install and a non-OEM install. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure where to find that. Maybe, maybe a WMI query, possibly registry, maybe? Yeah, you, well, you, and you might be able to get that from the BIOS as well. Like, because the assumption would be like if you had like an OEM, uh, some type of OEM. BIOS? Like Dell, we have, HP. Okay. Yeah, we could just pull the BIOS information out of that, and then you would know. Then from there, you could create a collection of all of those <coughs> machines that are OEM OSs, and then you can use a CSV import to import the, in, the, the serial number. Hmm, Colby? We'll do it that way. Thoughts? I just saw you over there. Colby was like, he got animated for a second. <laughs> oh no, I no, I don't have anything. Okay. No, like what he said. That's what I do. What <laughs> he was said. It? You were animated. Your eyebrows, eyebrows went like this. It was like this to. Like, that was emotion. He was interested. <laughs> he was in <interested laughs> showed emotion. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Sorry. man, for nothing. Yeah. Really, guys. Thanks. You're yeah, that's that's how I would do it. <laughs> and we've got a there's an article out there on how to do uh, how to import information using a CSV file. It's very easy now. Yeah. So it's like bloop, 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 import wizard, psh, it goes right in. Um, yeah. Oh, our scans are done. Okay, so again, now that data would look like what? Yeah. See, look at all of our errors, though. Isn't that cool? No, these no. are not really no. offline, by the way. They're not really offline. No, this is a this is an interesting VMware trick. Oh, it's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky, tricky. trickiness. Okay. Yes. So now we're just going to go look at Alan Rails. And we're going to go look for look rig files desktop and directories. Files and directories. Yep. And oh, we've got the desktop. There it is. There it is, right there. You can sort this obviously by the path. And again, you could write a report and look for. Yep. Do the same thing. Same report. Just look for that particular path, so, and then or just actually brig. Okay. My question to you guys is, which is better, WMI or files? Yep. Kind of like the files thing better. I see, and this is what this is what we could do. We did poll yesterday. You like files. Colby likes uh, files, and I like WMI better. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, a couple of different ways to skin the same cat. Yeah. Huh? So, yeah. All right, question. Yep. Dear Lexum Brig, can we scan install PDQ agent from a different console? For example, I installed PDQ agent from one server. Whenever I scan the same computers again from a different server, it is showing PDQ agent is not installed. Sincerely, Bijor Krishna D. Okay, so when you set up your agent, and Colby helped me out here, do you want to jump in on this one, man? Colby's our resident, it, his eyebrows are up. You see it? <laughs> Look at that. There it is. Okay, Colby, take it, man. Go, this. go, baby. Uh, the agent can only be tied to one server at a time. So uh, whichever server installed the agent last will be the one that won, and all the other servers are going to show that it's not installed. It will show up in the applications list for those computers, but the, the agent status is going to say not installed. Now, there are keys. There are encryption keys that are database, client, and that's how right, my, my right. Yep. Thank you. All right. Finally, yeah, I, I did something. Right. And I was just thinking of like if that if, mm -hmm. if that were the case where you could install it using one server and then access the agent using another server, that would be a that would security. be a giant security yeah. issue. Yeah. yeah. You could. Oh, 
All of these so, have an agent. Let's so just go you ahead. ever want to have fun, right? So you install the agent. I go right behind you, install the agent. Colby goes behind me. Yep. Last person to do it's the winner at this yep. point. So yeah. just be aware that, you know, agent can talk to one. Yeah. So okay, good. Anything else to add on that one? I'm putting my eyebrows up. Nope, that's oh, all. Okay. Nope, okay. We have another question. Dear Lex and Brig, can inventory with AD Sync create a report for computers that have been removed from AD in a time frame, say in the last month? Thanks, Patrick P. <coughs> Ooh. Okay. You would have to do a mixed sync. Yeah. Because okay. you had to delete any machine, so it would have to be. So you go mixed sync, so oh, then it deletes yes. machines out of AD. Uh -huh. the, right. the quick answer is no. Because we don't we don't we don't do historical data. So if a computer no. is removed if a computer is removed from inventory, <laughs> then we don't know that it's there. No no no. Who, who, who so was that? Not, was not, that Shane? That was Shane. The disembodied <laughs> voice of Shane. Wise and powerful. The quick answer is no. I love. But that. if you're doing mix sync, then those machines would uh, would actually exist. You'd in, see them. You'd see them in here, but they wouldn't exist in Active Directory. So if you did a mixed sync. The question, the, but the question is, if they've been removed from AD and you're using AD Sync, then whether you're doing mixed sync or full sync, they've been removed. Uh, therefore, you're not going to be able to to see them because they're out of the they're out of the database. Right. You would need import only. Oh yeah, import only. That's oh, right. okay. Yeah. Mixed Thanks. sync doesn't delete computers that you added manually. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Full import sync is only. just right. the full active right. sync. So yeah. No. No. All right. But. In, Unless you were using kind of yeah all right that's the first one here yeah did we we made that clear as mud didn't we yeah we sure did yeah <laughs> <coughs> yes no yeah. maybe <coughs> um who led us onto this web yeah, yeah i was gonna say oh. the two of us at the same time oh. <laughs> kelly bad decision yeah <laughs> so, um i just wanted okay, to so, yeah. so it'd be import only, only no delete no, no, no delete could, yeah if they were set that way yeah there is a it's possible that you could do it. You'd retain them, but how would you tell the difference? Yeah, you'd, it'd have to be over a period of time and then look at, yeah, it would be really difficult to do that. Yeah. Yep, to see what's available. Uh, All right, so, once yeah. again, clear as no. mud. Yep. All right. Yeah, All right. we got, uh, I can do yeah, a, a quick maintenance thing. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so quick All maintenance, right. right? Yep. So, first of all, I'm going to build a quick collection because, you know, I'm the laziest sysadmin out there. You should aspire to be as lazy as me. Yes, I would love to center that. All right. So I'm looking for machines that have uptime, and uptime's in the computer field, that is greater than 14 days, okay? Because, you know, if you don't reboot your machine, we're just going to call this uptime 14. Uptime greater than 14. You generally start having people calling you. Things are yeah. acting wonky, right? Yep. So we'll save this check. I'm not hitting cancel this time. All right, excellent. All right, so now uptime 14 populates, right? So I am going to go out here and I'm going to build a reboot package. Step's going to be a reboot. And because I'm a little paranoid, I'm going to make sure at the step level it doesn't run on servers because bad things happen, right? Exchange server rebooting in the middle of the day. We'll run this at three. Bed. I'm just going to say ha ha because if a user sees this, they deserve it, right? Okay. Now the property levels, I'm going to say this only runs on members of, again, just to be safe, uptime greater than 14. Okay. Save this. And then if you build a schedule and you run that every day, I mean, schedules, you've all seen that. There's one earlier. Yep. I just set that to run on a machine that's part of the uptime 14. So there's two ways to look at that. And that would run and make sure, you know, run that every day. I would say do it about 10 in the morning when people are getting into it because you've already told them to you know, reboot those machines on a regular basis, that would take care of them. Now, what if it, uh, What if uh, that schedule runs <coughs> one, uh, after it's mm. 14, but then it comes 14 due again? Does that does that run again? Yeah, the thing is, we do have to thank you for pointing that out. we got to check, take the checkbox out of, and I'm just going to pop up the schedule that we've got because yeah. I didn't even name that. But um, under the Options tab on your schedule, just make sure you take off the Stop Deploying to Targets once they succeed. Yep. So that you know, another fourteen days, it'll reboot their machine. Yeah, and that's a really powerful. That's yeah. If, if you've got a if you've got a problem either with stuff not deploying or things that you're like, ah, why is this deploying? It probably has something to do with that. Check that first. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So a yep. little bit of maintenance, little stuff. Yeah. You know, take care of. Uh, step outside your regular inventory into making inventory work for you yep. and making you a little lazier. I guess. Yeah. Do yep. we have any more questions? We have a follow up question from our ADOU. LMNOP previous question. 
Whenever I try to do AD sync, it doesn't show me all the all OU we have in our domain. Thanks again, Bijo Krishna D. That's interesting. All right, uh, I'm wondering if it's if it's if it is it is it an OU or a container? That's a good question. Uh, so we're not going to show because we're not going to show a container on this. Uh, do, 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 do. I, I, if, can I jump in on this one? Please, Please man. Yeah. All right. So if you have an, I believe what we're, the question is that there's a, a, a domain called all, and um, he's not seeing that in in his uh, as, as a list of OUs. So if he does, if he's not seeing all, remember, no. in order to, to, to show up, we only grab OUs that have computers in them or a mm -hmm. subsequent path. So we're not going to see if, if all only has users or or, or non-computer objects um we're not going to see you're not, not going to see it we're yeah. only grabbing things that, that that go back to computer objects yeah and it'll show it, it'll show it, correct me if i'm wrong it'll also show ou's where there's a group in with that ou even though there may not be any computer objects but that group all contains computer objects or references mm -hmm. computer objects it'll still show that is that correct colby or shane Sure. Okay. Sure. I browse her up again. I believe that that is correct. I'm a believer. All right. <laughs> Any more questions? And our final question today: We have been using inventory to help keep track of cows by tr by tying them to a computer and making custom fields. Although this is working fairly well, it can be a bit difficult to manage. Have you ever done something like this? And if so, any advice? Thanks, Matt Z. Have you climbed up that hill before? Not, I've been, done the exact same thing that Matt's done. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, that's, that's it. I'm, yeah. I'm not even, even remotely unique about how I do it. Um, the biggest thing, again, is if you've got cows that you've got listed somewhere, you can do an import. That makes it a little bit easier yeah. to CSV import, With, but, which I think he's been doing. But, yeah, I don't know if I've got anything to add to that. Shane, Colby, any thoughts? I don't no. have anything. No. Yeah, Matt, I don't... There, there are ways you can make using custom fields a little easier, uh, like the import you're, you're mentioning, but that, that's really what custom fields are there for, is yeah. to tie that information that we cannot grab from an inventory scan and tie it to a computer. So yeah. That's yep. pretty much, you're, do, you're, you're doing it. You're on you it, You might be able to make it a little bit more efficient, but that's pretty much the, the way you're, you're supposed to do it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's, yeah. Unfortunately, Matt, you're fairly well is going to have to be good enough. Fairly well is good enough. Yep. Fairly well is good enough. Yep. All right. All right, so uh, inventory. Inventory, more than inventory. More than, way, way more than just inventory. I, I want you to teach me those dance moves you were doing earlier. I got the Sasquatch or the Sasquatch? Sasquatch? Both, man. Right, I, okay. I love it. I, I got it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, Thanks Appreciate it. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Zachary M. and Patrick P., winners of PDQ Swag. Send us your info at webcast at pdq.com. If you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team and our forums. That's why we have them. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you back here next week.